So I just wanted to share the factor game with you today. Maybe this is a game you've seen before, um, but for those people who haven't, I love it and the kids love it. So I just thought I would take a few minutes to talk about it and show you how, how it gets played. So this is a game that I found probably like 20 years ago. I was involved in a program called MathLine with PBS when I was working on my master's degree. And this was one of the games that they were doing. And so I've used this with fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade over the years. And all the grade levels have really enjoyed it and really done a great job with it. So it's great as a class activity. We play it as a whole class to begin with. And then kids play it as partners. And then I often challenge them to take it home and play at home with their parents or with another sibling. So the way this works, it's simple, simple setup. You just number from one to 30. And then the way it works is player one gets to choose a number. And let's say I choose 22. And then player two, and I get 22 points because I choose 22. And then my opponent, player two, would get all of the remaining factors of 22. So they would get one and two and 11. And they would get 14 points total, and I would get 22. And then they would go and they would choose a factor, and then I would get the points remaining for the factors that remain. So if they chose um, 21, for example, then I would get three and seven because the one was already used. So the only real rules are that you can't use a number that was already used, and you can't choose a number that leaves no factors for the other person. If you do that, then you lose your turn. And th those are it, those are the only rules. So I always let the students go first when we play, and if inevitably they choose 30 as their first pick. So they choose 30. So I'll tell them maybe use two different colors or use a, a circle and a square when you're picking, um, marking who gets what numbers. So they'll pick 30, and then I get all the factors of 30. So I will get one and two and three and five and six and 10 and 15 and they're like what how'd you get all those points that's not fair so they start to see 30 is not the best choice as a first choice in this game if you want to get the most points as we're doing this i do have scorekeepers i'll have one person keep the score for the students and one person keep the score for me and i'll also have somebody doing it on a calculator to get the running total so after that first turn, they pick 30, I get all the factors, then I choose something, and typically I'll choose something like 25, um, because it gives them one, no, I can't choose 25, can't choose 25, that would mean I lose my turn, because that gives them nothing left, right? The only other factors are 5 and 1, so I can't choose 25, so I would choose 27, and that would just give them 9 because the one is taken, the three is taken, all that's left for them is nine. So on that turn, I got 27 points and they got nine points. And so at this point, they start to look a little bit more carefully and understand that they wanna pick the highest number they can that has the fewest factors left over for me to have. So maybe at this point, they might go with 20 because if they pick 20, I would get four. And I think that's all I would get. So they would probably choose that and their color was pink and that would leave me with four. And so the play just keeps going like that, alternating turns until there are no numbers left to choose. And once there are no numbers left to choose, we stop and then they tally everything and see who got the most points. So that's the first time we play. We usually play a second time and I will let them choose again, just let them choose first again so that they can see if they can make a better first choice the first time. And then they play with partners. And as they play with partners, their job is not just to see who can get the most points, but see if they can figure out the strategy. What's the best first choice? What's the best second choice if you don't get to pick first? That kind of thing. And then we discuss as a class. And then I always challenge them to take it home and play it with a, a, a parent or another sibling, you know, and just see how they can do with it. So it's a really great game, really simple, really easy. Kids love it. I do have a blog post about it, so I'll drop that in the comments. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'm Ellie, and thanks so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day.